Hi, I'm Victoria Southgate, but everyone who knows me in the space sector calls me Vix. I joined the Interplanetary Society 13 years ago, knowing very little about space, exploration or technology. And back then I knew even less about the importance of STEM. I've learned a lot since then and I'm so pleased I joined this amazing community. I never dreamed I'd work with astronauts like Tim Peake and Helen Sharman, as well as meeting men who'd flown to and walked on the moon. I thought space was only for scientists and engineers, but I couldn't have been more wrong. Exploring space is for everyone. So many different skills are needed for the future of space travel, and even if you're not a scientist or an astronaut, you can still be a very important part of it. I hope the videos you're about to see inspire you as we take you on a journey through time and into an exciting future of space travel. First, I will hand over to Steve, who is a space artist and also a vice president of the British Interplanetary Society. He will explain a little bit about how the achievements of the past continue to inspire the technology of the future. Over to you, Steve. Early experiments and uses of rockets appeared as early as the 10th century, made by the ancient Chinese and which were used to propel arrows. These were not much more than tubes filled with gunpowder and were very similar to the fireworks we have today. The real advances came in the 19th century, where people started thinking about how rockets could be used for space travel. The first person to think about this in detail was the Russian school teacher and mathematician Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, who published his work on this subject in 1903. It wasn't until some years later, in 1926, that American inventor Robert Hutchings Goddard built and launched the world's first experimental rocket. The next major advance in rocketry was made in Germany in the 1940s, where rockets were built which could fly over a distance of hundreds of miles. Around this time, early ideas about realistic spaceship designs and the practical side of flying into space were being thought about even visiting the moon and the planets of our solar system. And behind me, here at the BIS headquarters in London, in these wonderful artworks by Ralph Smith, you can see some of the world's earliest ideas about space exploration and spacecraft design. The first object actually to be put into space was a small satellite called Sputnik 1, which was launched by the Russians on the 4th of October 1957. And four years later, on 12th of April 1961, the first person to be launched into space was a Russian called Yuri Gagarin. This event started an international race to put a person on the moon. One of the principal engineers behind the early development of rockets was Werner von Braun, who went on to develop the huge Saturn V rocket designed to take astronauts to the moon. And within 10 years, Two Americans, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, successfully landed on the moon on July 20th, 1969. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. In the 1980s through to 2011, NASA, the American Space Agency, developed the Space Transportation System, better known as the Space Shuttle, to transport astronauts and cargo into space more frequently than ever before. This was a major step forward in spacecraft design because part of the Space Shuttle worked like an aeroplane to fly back to Earth after its mission in space. The Space Shuttle has launched some amazing spacecraft, such as the Hubble Space Telescope, which was launched into Earth orbit in 1990. This has allowed astronomers to see further into space than ever before and has greatly helped our understanding and knowledge of the incredible universe around us. Perhaps the most noteworthy achievement in the Space Shuttle's time was its crucial role in the construction of the International Space Station, which started back in 1998 and took over 10 years to build. To this day, the International Space Station, or ISS as it's known, 
is still the largest human-made object in space so far. Today's rockets and spacecraft are being built to be less wasteful by being used over and over again, rather than just for one flight into space. One such design is the SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket, which has legs for landing on, so that it can be refueled and launched again. Another example of a reusable spacecraft is the Dragon space capsule, which carries astronauts and cargo to the International Space Station. Over the years, other countries have also developed their own rockets and spacecraft and are working together to achieve larger and more ambitious space missions. And here in the UK, there are now plans around the country to build our own space ports where we can launch spacecraft and be involved in even more exciting space projects in the future. Thank you, Steve. It's amazing how far back in history the idea of rockets and space travel goes. From science fiction stories written by Jules Verne and H.G. Wells in the late 1800s to their imagination becoming a reality in the 20th century. We're now in the 21st century and the technology over the past 20 years has already become greater than many of us dreamed. And now we have more pioneers like Elon Musk who are making the future even more exciting. So I will now hand over to the head of the British Interplanetary Society who will tell you more about what is happening now and the possible future of space travel. Over to you Simon. As you can see, we have achieved so much already using rockets. Plans are also currently being made to visit the moon again, but this time, instead of just visiting, have the ability to stay there for an extended period of time, in the same way astronauts do on the International Space Station. And also, for the first time, plans for human exploration of Mars are being made, using bigger rockets that can be refueled in space and making a journey that will last many months before landing and setting foot on the planet. But in the future, the way we get into and travel in space will change. Future launch vehicles will become even more like aeroplanes to allow safer and more routine and more affordable flights into space. And other spacecraft can be permanently based in space to allow us to get to the moon and the planets more easily like a kind of space taxi. Having good transport around space is crucial and needs careful thought and planning, a bit like how we have roads and railways connecting our towns and cities here on Earth. This is really important as it will make it possible for people to have more regular trips into and around space, to build more useful structures like space stations which have hotels, schools and science labs, as well as facilities like shops, farms and construction sites to build and assemble our homes and to repair and refuel our spacecraft in space. All of these essential things together is what we refer to as infrastructure, which is a term for the underlying foundations that allow us to get on with our day-to-day -day lives. Here on Earth we have already built this up, all around us, and often take it for granted. But building this actually in space is crucial to allowing people to properly start visiting, living and working in space in the future. We also want to make sure that we put the right pieces of infrastructure in place, in the right order. These will be the building blocks of our society in space and will allow us to carry out living and exploring space more easily and affordably in the future. It is also really important that we do this without causing harm to our environment both in space and here on Earth. This way of thinking and doing things more carefully to ensure a better and less wasteful future is what we refer to as sustainability and is a really important topic for both the future of life on Earth and in space. Other than transport, some of the wider challenges that we will need to solve to better support our future in space are firstly just living in space, the limits of our human body and creating replacement for the environment we have here on Earth, such as gravity to stop you floating around and the atmosphere to breathe, and even things that we take for granted every day like the sun rising and setting and how important that is for life that has evolved over millions of years on Earth. Once we have these building blocks in space, we can start to expand our horizons further. 
Advances in technology and the way in which we use space will allow us to more easily explore our solar system and in turn make more scientific discoveries. New types of rocket engines will allow spaceships to go faster, reducing the time it takes to travel to different planets and allow us to fly longer distances and reach even the furthest objects in the very edges of our solar system. Beyond our solar system, there are billions of stars out there, even more than you could possibly imagine, like our sun, but with planets of their own orbiting them. Maybe some will support life. Getting there will involve what is referred to as interstellar space travel, between stars. This is a really ambitious journey, and because of the immense distances involved, even using the types of rockets we have today would take thousands of years to travel there. This means we need new types of engines with more power to accelerate us to faster speeds to make the journey time shorter and within an astronaut's lifetime. Even though interstellar travel sounds like a thing of the distant future, people have already started to look at how we might do it and what breakthroughs in technology we will need to make it possible. Closer to home, we will also find new ways of harnessing energy and resources from space that will allow us to better protect our home planet and continue to improve our quality of life here on Earth. With this, we will continue to expand our knowledge of the universe around us and our place within it. Also, the potential for what we're able to achieve if we work together towards a shared vision of the future. Thank you, Simon. As you just heard, there are so many exciting things happening at the moment and the interstellar future sounds fantastic. I wonder if we'll have cruise ships that will take us to distant stars on holidays in the future. If we do, I'd certainly want a ticket on that journey. I would like to finish our video with a bit of information on how you, your STEM club and your school can be part of the biggest celebration of space in the world. The celebration is called World Space Week and it happens every year from the 4th to the 10th of October. The 4th and 10th are very important dates in history that have had a massive impact on how we use space for the benefit of all today. So what is World Space Week? World Space Week is a dedicated week where everyone in the world has the opportunity to celebrate the benefits of space on humanity. You can join in by organising parties, events, activities or giving your lessons a space theme for a day or even the whole week. You can do this through your school or you can create events in your local community and even at home with your family. The aim is to spread the word about how mind-bogglingly amazing space really is and to educate and inspire those around us. Why do we need to explore space? What knowledge can we gain from doing science in a low-gravity environment? And how can exploration and the use of space help us to improve life on Earth and help us to sustain our planet? Sustainability. It's a word that is talked about a lot at the moment. We all know about the importance of recycling, that we should fix and reuse items instead of throwing them away. We should make toilet paper from sustainable sources. Don't cut down our rainforests, look after our animals and insects, and so much more. Learning how to be sustainable and how being unsustainable will affect our future, and how we should live our day-to-day -day lives to maintain our home, maintain our planet, is a major focus across the world. But what about sustainability in space? This is where you come in. This year, for World Space Week, the theme is space and sustainability and we would like you, your STEM club and your school to create a World Space Week event or activity using this theme. You could have a full week of space related activities or themed lessons or it could be as simple as having a one day space themed fancy dress whilst you go about your normal school day. To help you, here at the British Interplanetary Society, we have a team who can support you with everything you need to organise your own events between the 4th and the 10th of October. Have a look at our website, or you or your teacher can email me and my team and ask as many questions as you like about how to run a World Space Week event. The address can be seen on screen now. 
I look forward to hearing from you and helping you and learning all about the World Space Week events in October. Well, that's it from me, Steve, Simon and everyone at the British Interplanetary Society. We hope you've enjoyed the journey through space and time and that you are inspired to create your own World Space Week event, whether it's at your school, your STEM club or even at home with your family. Thank you for watching. Carry on being curious and remember, your dreams and your imagination can become reality because you are the future of space travel.